Picture this. A patient walks into your clinic, presenting with a persistent dry cough, shortness of breath, and low-grade fever. They've already been treated with antibiotics, but the symptoms just won't go away. What could it be? Welcome to our channel. Today, I'll be guiding you through the enigma of cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, COP. Get ready to delve into its historical background, clinical features, diagnostic approach, and treatment. So, buckle up for this diagnostic journey, and let's get started. Organizing pneumonia was first described in the late 1800s as a non-resolving bacterial pneumonia. As the 20th century progressed, organizing pneumonia was recognized in other conditions, leading to confusion regarding nomenclature and classification. Different terminologies were coined, including cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, COP, obliterative bronchiolitis, OB, bronchiolitis interstitial pneumonia, BIP, and bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia, BOOP. However, BOOP caused confusion and is currently seldom used. COP better reflects the clinical and radiologic characteristics of the disorder and is currently classified as one of the major forms of idiopathic interstitial pneumonia. Pathophysiology of organizing pneumonia. A. Alveolar injury. Early events include denudation of epithelial basal laminae and necrosis of type 1 alveolar epithelial cells plasma protein leakage, fibrin formation, and inflammatory cell migration into alveolar space. B. Alveolar organization. Fibroblast recruitment and proliferation in alveolar lumen. Formation of fibroinflammatory buds, Masson's bodies, in alveolar space. C. Remodeling. Inflammatory cells and fibrin deposits are replaced by my of I broblasts and collagen bundles. Alveolar epithelial cells proliferate, restoring continuity of the alveolar capillary membrane. Integrity and function of the alveolar unit are restored. Differences between organizing pneumonia and usual interstitial pneumonia, UIP. Organizing pneumonia is reversible, unlike UIP. Alveolar epithelial injury is less severe in organizing pneumonia. Regeneration of alveolar epithelial cells is critical for recovery in organizing pneumonia. Differences in fibroblast proliferation, apoptosis, and extracellular matrix regulation. There are several variants of organizing pneumonia. Focal organizing pneumonia. A rare, often asymptomatic form, which is usually curable with surgical resection. Fulminant disease. Characterized by a rapidly progressive clinical course, requiring intravenous glucocorticoid therapy, with respiratory failure as the primary cause of death. Cicatricial organizing pneumonia. Featuring airspaces filled with loose fibromyxoid connective tissue and predictive of fibrotic nonspecific interstitial pneumonia. Acute fibrinous and organizing pneumonia. A rare alveolar filling disease with patchy distribution. What are the clinical features of COP? COP is suspected when infectious pneumonia doesn't respond to antibiotics. Symptoms of COP are subacute, emerging over weeks to months. Patients often remember when illness began. Common symptoms. Dry cough, 71%, and dyspnea, 62%, worsened by exertion. Influenza-like symptoms in 10-15% to of cases, fever in 44%. Hemoptysis incidence very low. Most common physical exam finding. Inspiratory crackles, 60%. Clubbing is rare in COP cases. Physical examination normal in less than 5% of patients with COP. Diagnostic evaluation. Multidisciplinary approach is required. A combination of clinical, radiologic, and pathological expertise is required for accurate diagnosis of COP. Laboratory tests. Nonspecific results in patients with COP. Inflammatory markers like erythrocyte sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein level, and leukocyte count are frequently elevated. When connective tissue disorders are suspected, tests like antinuclear antibody, rheumatoid factor, anticyclic citrullinated peptide, creatine kinase, etc., should be conducted. Pulmonary function tests often reveal a restrictive ventilatory defect and reduced diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide. Normal lung volumes in up to 25% of COP patients. Airflow obstruction uncommon, except in smokers. Stiff, non-compliant lungs at diagnosis, which return to normal with treatment response. Arterial hypoxemia common at rest and during exercise. In radiologic studies, diverse findings are seen in COP patients. 
Chest radiograph typically shows bilateral opacities, patchy or diffuse, consolidative or hazy, with normal lung volumes. High-resolution CT lung scans reveal more extensive disease, with peripheral and multifocal consolidation patterns. Lesions can be unilateral or bilateral, in all lung zones, with slightly predominant subpleural and lower lung zone distribution. Other findings include ground glass opacities, nodules, parabronchovascular pattern, linear and band-like pattern, focal lesions, or paralobular pattern. The posteroanterior radiograph of the chest in panel A shows bilateral, diffuse, consolidative opacities in the presence of normal lung volumes. The HRCT scan of the chest in panel B shows peripheral and multifocal consolidation in the middle and lower lobes. The HRCT scan in panel C shows diffuse peripheral nodules. The HRCT scans in panels D and E show migratory opacities, a patchy, ground glass opacity in the right upper lobe, in panel D, and new areas of patchy, ground glass opacities in the same patient one month later, in panel E. The HRCT scan in panel F shows the reversed halo, or atoll, sign, characterized by a rim of consolidation with more central clearing or ground glass opacities, shown with arrow. Bronchoalveolar lavage, BAL, analysis, recommended if COP is suspected to rule out infection and other disorders, like in eosinophilic pneumonia, alveolar hemorrhage. Cellular analysis often shows lymphocytic alveolitis, with increased neutrophil and eosinophil counts. Normalization of bowel findings lags behind clinical and radiologic improvements. Correlation of biopsy specimens with CT findings, important for determining whether the biopsy specimen accurately represents the interstitial process. Smaller specimens make it difficult to identify all features of the pattern. Serial step sectioning of small biopsy specimens can increase the chance of detecting the organizing pneumonia pattern. The low magnification photomicrograph in panel A, hematoxylin and eosin stain, shows multiple variously shaped, intraluminal plugs of loose connective tissue. The intervening alveolar walls show mild thickening by an inflammatory infiltrate, but the lung architecture is otherwise preserved, without features of established fibrosis. The high magnification photomicrograph in panel B, hematoxylin and eosin stain, shows an intraluminal fibromyxoid lesion with a cluster of inflammatory cells, shown with asterisk, and regenerating epithelial cells, some with a flat shape that is consistent with type 1 pneumocytes, cover the surface of the bud, arrow. The high magnification photomicrograph in panel C, pentachrome stain, shows an intraluminal plug of loose connective tissue, green, that extends from one alveolus to the adjacent one through the pores of cone, known as butterfly pattern. Mild inflammation is present in the alveolar walls and surrounding parenchyma. The low magnification photomicrograph in panel D, hematoxylin and eosin stain, shows a focal organizing pneumonia lesion that was surgically resected. The low magnification photomicrograph in panel E shows cicatricial organizing pneumonia with densely hyalinized and fibrotic luminal plugs, shown with asterisk, and metaplastic bone formation, shown with arrow, associated with preservation of the underlying lung architecture. The high magnification photomicrograph in panel F shows acute fibrinous and organizing pneumonia characterized by intraalveolar fibrin in the form of balls, asterisk, and intraluminal fibromyxoid lesions of organizing pneumonia, shown with arrow. Treating organizing pneumonia is empirical, as there have been no prospective, randomized treatment trials conducted. The decision to start therapy and the choice of therapy depend on the severity of the clinical, physiological, and radiologic abnormalities at presentation and the rapidity of disease progression. Spontaneous improvement is rare, occurring in less than 10% of patients. Glucocorticoid therapy. Systemic glucocorticoid therapy is the preferred treatment for symptomatic patients with respiratory impairment due to COP. The usual starting dose is 0.5 to 1 mg of prednisone per kilogram of body weight per day, given as a single oral dose in the morning. This initial dose is given for 2 to 4 weeks, and depending on the clinical response, the dose is tapered to 0.25 mg per kilogram per day to complete 4 to 6 months of therapy. Over the next 6 to 12 months, the oral glucocorticoid dose is gradually tapered to zero if the patient's condition remains stable or improves. 
Pneumocystis juraviki prophylaxis is recommended with doses of prednisone higher than 20 mg per day. For patients with severe or rapidly progressive disease, high-dose glucocorticoid therapy with methylprednisolone may be required. Relapses have been reported in less than 25% of cases, usually within the first year after the initial presentation. Factors associated with relapse include delayed diagnosis, delayed initiation of treatment, and severe disease, among others. Relapses are commonly treated by resuming or increasing glucocorticoid treatment. Other therapies. If the initial glucocorticoid therapy doesn't result in clinical improvement or cannot be tapered to a safe level, alternative agents can be considered. Macrolide antibiotics with anti-inflammatory properties, such as erythromycin or clarithromycin, may be used as adjuncts or alternatives to oral glucocorticoid therapy. Treatment is usually administered for three to six months or longer. Cytotoxic therapy, like azathioprine or cyclophosphamide, is not recommended for COP patients except in very rare cases where other approaches have failed. Mycophenolate mofetil, an inhibitor of proliferating lymphocytes, is increasingly used as a glucocorticoid sparing agent in the treatment of fibrotic lung disease, including COP. Other agents, like cyclosporin, rituximab, and intravenous immune globulin, have been used with limited success in treating rapidly progressive disease or glucocorticoid-resistant organizing pneumonia. Prognosis. Excellent prognosis and treatment response for COP patients. Better outcomes for patients with radiologic airspace opacities compared to reticular opacities. Hospitalized patients generally improve rapidly after diagnosis and glucocorticoid treatment initiation. Progressive respiratory failure and death rare in COP patients. Death more commonly reported in secondary organizing pneumonia due to underlying illness. Five-year survival rate exceeds 90%, though COP patients have higher mortality than the general population. Future directions in COP. Need for better understanding of incidence and prevalence of COP. More studies required to distinguish primary COP from secondary organizing pneumonia. Dose and duration of glucocorticoid therapy poorly defined. Usefulness of immunosuppressive therapy unknown. Deciphering cellular and molecular mechanisms underlying COP development and resolution may lead to better diagnostic and therapeutic approaches for organizing pneumonia and UIP. That's all for today's video on cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. We hope you found it informative. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Ask me for new information.